welcome to today's webinar and a very good morning to all of you who are joining from joining us from the US region uh, good afternoon to all of you joining us from the uh, European region uh, today's webinar will be on how you can enable monetization of your API ecosystem so um, we will be talking about how you can monetize your API and generate some revenue out of it uh, these APIs that you have exposed using um, uh, we'll be talking about some basic principles and how you can do monetization using uh, the WS2 API Manager as well as the WS2 Data Analytics Server. Uh, my name is Nuan Das and with me today is uh, Rukshan Prematunga. So the both of us will be walking you through this session. We'll be first starting off uh, with the presentation where, which we will use to describe the concepts, the integration points and the necessary uh, action items that you have to do to enable monetization on your API ecosystem. It will be followed uh, with a demonstration uh, using a simple uh, building engine that we have built. And uh, we'll be uh, walking you through this session uh, starting now. And if you have any questions, please uh, ask them over the go to uh, webinar chat. We'll be taking questions at the end of the session and uh, answering as many questions as possible. Uh, within the given time frame. Okay, so let's begin. So before we actually dive into the monetization of the uh, API ecosystem, let's quickly brief through the WSO2 API Manager, what it is and its uh, basic concepts. So we have an idea of what we are talking about as we uh, move along. So the API Manager, the WSO2 API Manager is a, a free and open source API management platform which allows you to do end-to-end -end API management such as starting from API publishing where you design your APIs and publish them uh, using an API publishing portal which is used by API developers and it also has an API store which is mainly used as the uh, discovery portal for APIs. So this is known as the developer portal as well uh, because uh, this is where application developers basically the people who consume APIs come in uh, discover APIs and register their applications and subscribe to APIs and start using it. So this developer portal also has this, uh, the subscription management capabilities which is again a key concept uh, coming in when you are talking about monetizing APIs uh, for their usage. It also has a token management system uh, this basically what it does is uh, deals with the access tokens, the security tokens and stuff um, on its lifecycle management, uh, renewals and things like that. It also gives you the capability of applying uh, policies such as throttling into your API and as well as a very, uh, very uh, good analytics platform which can be integrated with uh, the other components of the WSO2 platform. And the API Manager itself is a, has a very flexible uh, architecture which allows you to do high scalable deployments and allow you to do very um, uh, complicated as well as strong deployments which can cater lots of requests uh, in a given time frame. So this, the, the entire solution is based on the WS2 Carbon platform and it is Apache 2 license which means that you can download it and use it for free. And it utilizes proven WS2 technology, such as features coming in from the WS2 ESB, which uh, mainly plays, plays a major role of the gateway component of the API manager, as well as features coming in from the uh, WS2 identity server, which plays a key part of the key management aspects of the API manager, as well as features coming in from the WS2 governance registry, uh, which plays the repository aspects as well as uh, the governance aspects of the API uh, of, of the API. So uh, this is a, a very high introduction into the API management uh, platform. So we will be using some of these terms uh, later during the presentation and in the demonstration. So moving on into monetizing. So the first thing that you will have to consider when you are thinking of a monetizing solution is on the billing model. So APIs are today are actually everywhere. So for those of, who, those of you who are joining us, I'm sure you are coming from different kinds of industries such as 
maybe the telecommunications, uh, travel and leisure industry, um, textile, likewise. So you may have be having APIs of different types in your organizations and enterprises. And if you think of it, each of these APIs, if you think if you are thinking of monetizing them, will have different patterns that you would adhere to uh, to monetize them. Uh, so they have their own uh, characteristics. So, but what we've seen in general is that usually the API publishers, the people who develop and publish these APIs, uh, who uh, build the consumers of these APIs, which means the, uh, the the application developers who consume these APIs for the applications are the ones that get built. And each API that you like uh, create will be exposed over different usage levels. So this is something we call tiers uh, inside the WSO2 API manager. So different usage levels allow you to do different uh, capabilities. Uh, they give you different kinds of access rates and some of these tiers could be um, uh, free tiers as well, meaning that you allow them, allow the API to be accessed when they are uh, used over the free tier without any charges. So these kinds of uh, capabilities uh, the, the, these different types of tiers allow you to come up with your own uh, usage plans for your APIs. For example, the particular API can have a mix of tiers, uh, free tiers as well as uh, billable tiers. So what that means is you could uh, encourage people to use the API for free for a certain period of time for evaluation stuff and then when they want to upgrade, uh, make them upgrade into a, a commercial or a billing, billable uh, tier. And next, the API consumer is actually um, he selects a tier of preference when subscribing to API. So when a publisher exposes his API over several tiers, the consumer gets the ability of uh, selecting one of those available tiers for subscription. So at that point, he he might make a, a decision based on his uh, requirement, uh, based on what he wants to achieve, and maybe based on his budget, etc. So he might first decide to uh, go for a free tier and later, uh, if he's satisfied, upgrade later to a uh, billable tier. And finally, uh, the API is uh, invoice. The API consumer is invoiced based on the tiers uh, that are consumed by his application. So, uh, an application developer can have several APIs, uh, several applications, which are subscribed to several APIs over several uh, usage plans. So at the end of the month or at the end of each billing cycle, the API consumer would receive a bill uh, based on the type of tiers that he has used in his application. So this is uh, what the invoice will be based on uh, for, for the application development. So this is uh, again a very high level or uh, introduction of, of the basic billing model uh, that suits, suits an API management platform. Then if you are like thinking about monetization, something that comes as a mandatory uh, mandatory thing in the picture is a billing engine. So uh, a billing engine will typically contain all your uh, billing plans that you have in your enterprise. So you will define what kind of um, what kind of exposure you are going to give, what kind of uh, data or request you are going to allow, and what are their rates like they could be monthly rates, uh, they could be uh, per, per day rates, likewise. Uh, so you will define those plans and uh, levels of uh, the, those billing plans as well as you will also decide on what you are going to do when you uh, uh, when you access over the allowed quota, likewise. So there will, these plans will be there in your billing system uh, if you are uh, thinking about monetization. So how it maps into the API management product is again through tiers. So for example, you could have a tier called Goal, which allows you uh, 20 requests per minute. And uh, that could be uh, a subscription based uh, plan where you charge the user on a monthly basis. And for the requests that go allow that, um, above that allowed limit, you charge extra. So that could be a subscription type of uh, pay payment where you bill him on a monthly basis uh, for a standard price. Then there could be other types of plans such as uh, there could be a tier or billing uh, usage plan called silver 
which allows you like uh, five requests per minute. And in this particular plan, you don't charge him a, a standard fee uh, on a monthly basis, but instead you charge him for every request that he makes um, likewise. Or maybe uh, again on a, a tier-based limit. So the, these are different kinds of uh, plans that you can come up with based on your based on how you see fit for your organization. So the point here is that uh, you will define these plans on your billing system and you will have a, a one to one or an exact mapping of each of these plans on the API solution and they will be mapped to a tier. So it is this uh, same tier that we will be using, the API manager will be using uh, for throttling your request as well. So then I mentioned about uh, charging for overconsumption. So uh, when you were defining your usage plans, you had a plan of saying you will allow this amount of requests over uh, this uh, amount of time. And you also had a rule saying uh, for the requests that go beyond that percentage, uh, I will charge extra. So when defining a throttling tier on the API manager um, solution, uh, what throttling means is that you would either stop stop the request by uh, when it reaches a particular quota. But if you want to allow users to go beyond that and charge them extra for the extra consumption, you should have a method of doing that on the API solution. So our way of doing that is that when you define a tier, you have a special flag called, uh, called stop on quota reaching. Uh, if you set it to true, uh, your request will be stopped when you re uh, reach that particular quota limit and if you set it to false we will allow the request to go even beyond that particular limit and in both cases the over consumed request will be monitored uh, separately so at any given time you can get uh, which request you access above your quota and which request came in within your quota then there's another, plan, another flag called the billing plan. So this actually has uh, two values, uh, like a, a billing plan for your tier could be uh, free or it could be commercial. So this, is, this basically indicates uh, whether your tier is a free tier or a commercial tier. So within the API product, this is mainly used for visualization purposes, um, which we will look into in the next slide. And this could also be used when you are generating your uh, invoices uh, at the end of the billing cycle as well. So again, then there are these uh, things called the custom attributes when you are defining your tiers. So these are actually display only values. You could uh, use any uh, kind of key value pairs to be displayed on the APIs too as an assistance for people who are uh, subscribing uh, on the APIs too. So once you defined your tiers and published your APIs, um, uh, this is what your uh, store will look like. So this is actually something, this enhancement is actually something we did in the last uh, release. Where if, your, if the API that you uh, exposed uh, is, is exposed over a free tiers only, we categorize that API as a free API. And if your API is exposed over commercial APIs only, it will be categorized as a paid or a commercial API. If the API has a mixed set of tiers, then it will be uh, categorized as a freemium API. So uh, this is uh, actually uh, used as a visualization um, aspect to assist people who are coming into the store uh, just to see what kind of uh, API they will be subscribing or going to use. Going to use. So now you've actually defined your usage plans, mapped them to tiers, and you actually published a few APIs based on these usage plans. Then the next uh, part is uh, con the consuming part. So now your application developers would uh, come into the store and start consuming your APIs. But if you now think of invoicing these application developers, uh, a mandatory like thing would be that these API consumers, if you are uh, to be able to build them, they should exist in your billing system. So maybe they already do, but that's not given because on the API store, like generally you can sign up and create new accounts and do that. So uh, 
this is something that you will have to enforce to make sure that the accounts are accounts exist in the uh, billing system. So the WSO2 API manager allows you to uh, enforce that part. So uh, in the API manager, we have the, this thing co called workflows. So we, this means that you can engage custom business workflows for several user actions that you perform on the API store. So API subscription is again one of those uh, user actions. So we can engage a custom business workflow when you are subscribing to an API. So in this case the custom workflow would be uh, if you are actually subscribing to a uh, commercial tier and your account doesn't exist on the billing system uh, through this workflow we will force you to go and register yourself on the billing system and without you going and doing that you will not be able to create any subscriptions on the uh, API manager. So there will be several checks that are happening uh, at this point. So the first check would be whether you are actually subscribing to a free tier or to a commercial tier. If it's a free tier you can actually ignore and move forward. But if it's a commercial tier then the second check, check, second check comes into play where you actually check whether this user already exists in your billing system or not. So this would be the second check. Uh, so this can be done either by using APIs in your billing system or either by querying uh, their data stores or whichever mechanism is suitable. And if the user doesn't exist on the um, your billing system, you will be forcing him to uh, register himself there uh, by doing a redirect to the to the particular billing engine's um, use sign up page. Uh, you will be forcing him to uh, sign up over there. So uh, when this actually happens, the subscription that he attempted to create will actually be created on the API manager, but it will be an, in an inactive state, meaning that you cannot really use it until you are um, until you are registered in the billing system. So when we when the redirection happens to the billing system, we will be sending these uh, two things called the callback URL as well as a reference ID. Uh, we'll look into these details uh, in the next slide when we uh, evaluate their usage. So once you're on the billing system's uh, user registration page, you will be required to provide uh, your credit card information and uh, whatever the other information that is that is necessary uh, by your billing system uh, to invoice you. And once that part is completed, once your user registration um, part actually happens successfully on the billing engine, then you will be redirected back onto the API store so to carry on with the operation. And when this redirect happens actually, uh, the, your billing system or, or something that's uh, fronting your billing system acting as an agent perhaps uh, would do a callback request to the API store. So this callback URL is the one that we sent when we were doing the initial request. So this callback would happen from the billing system onto the API store and uh, in that callback it will send us the workflow, particular workflow reference ID. So through this workflow reference ID, uh, the API store knows which uh, subscription to activate based on the status of the request that it receives. So if the user count creation is uh, successful, it can then activate the particular subscription uh, so that you can uh, start consuming your APIs. So uh, this uh, callback endpoint is a secured endpoint, so it needs a special kinds of privileges to be accessed and it can also be like you can also enable things like mutual authentication to make sure that people outside your billing system uh, cannot come and access it. So uh, this is the uh, way or path that you ensure that your API consumers or application developers are actually registered in your billing system so that you can invoice them. And a point to note here is that this is a one-time thing for any uh, for any given user, uh, meaning that this will only happen if your account all doesn't exist and if it already exists in the billing system, the subscription will automatically be created uh, in an active state so you can use it um, then and there itself. Then uh, we move on to the uh, a little bit of code excerpt from the uh, this workflow. 
so in the API manager every workflow integration we call it as a workflow extension point so this extension point uh, if you are providing an implementation for one of these extension points you are required to uh, implement it from a particular uh, user interface and uh, this interface has a, a response object so there are different response types that you can uh, use so in the case of browser based redirections as in the earlier case where we wanted to redirect the user to the billing systems user registration page we will be using this object type called the HTTP workflow response object so in here you can set the redirect URL as well as any additional parameters that you want to send to your uh, billing system. Uh, the redirect URL will be the URL of your user manage of user registration page and all the other parameters will be sent in as uh, query parameters and optionally you could set a redirect confirmation message as well. So what you will be setting there is uh, basically a confirmation message just to inform the user that you will be redirected from uh, this system onto another system um, and to give him some kind of context on what is uh, happened. So this is the kind of uh, like uh, implementation that you will have to deal with if you are plugging in a, a custom workflow uh, to redirect to any uh, any other website or web page uh, likewise. So again uh, this uh, sequence diagram uh, like explains what I just walked you through so it's I won't go through it again so it basically has uh, like the flow that we talked about about doing a subscription request and checking whether the TA is free uh, likewise so uh, this can be used later for uh, for the reference so now that we have uh, created our tiers uh, or, or usage plans rather uh, we've published some APIs and uh, brought the system into a place where we can now actually uh, build uh, our uh, API consumers. So the next step uh, moving forward from this point would be like how you actually monitor the usage of the of the people who are using your APIs and uh, how you could invoice them. So to walk through that uh, process uh, I will hand over the session to Rukshan and he will walk you through the invoicing process and the rest of the presentation. Thank you, Ron. Uh, invoicing. Uh, invoicing is uh, based on uh, how API usage happens. So for that we have to point to the API usage. So when a, uh, when a client uh, requests the backend, it goes through the uh, API manager and uh, it back to the uh, backend. And after that it uh, coming through to the client again uh, through the uh, API manager. So in this part there is uh, several uh, states and information in the in this request. As for example, uh, whether request is success or it, uh, it is total or fail, that's the response date and likewise. So to in order to be, get this information from uh, request, we have to configure API manager uh, with dash for analytics. So if you configure the API manager for analytics, you can have uh, six type of uh, request uh, event stream. So uh, those are uh, request uh, event stream, response event stream, port event stream, total stream, destination, and workflow uh, stream. Uh, in request, you get the uh, successful uh, request uh, information, and from response uh, stream, you get the uh, response related. Uh, information etc you can have if you get the uh, request related information to the analyzer so these uh, event stream are published to the dash and later in building engine can uh, use this uh, information for generate invoice so let's go to how we going to uh, configure api manager for analytics so there are uh, two ways we can configure uh, api manager for analytics so we will go through the first one and when uh, API manager publish this uh, event stream and uh, in that event receivers are uh, capture this and uh, persist them. So in here we use API manager with dash for uh, analytic, analytic configuration and in that we have uh, this part for uh, 
generating uh, reading these event stream and uh, generating uh, summary data. So these summary data can feed to the billing engine and then generate the noise. So in this case, uh, we generate the summary data based on our uh, summary data plan. Uh, we take these summary data from that rescue API and then feed back to the billing engine. For that, we need a middle component, middle agent called billing agent, which uh, retrieve data from that REST API and then feed back to the billing engine. So the other way is uh, configure these analytics using RDB. That is, it is similar to the earlier one. API manager published event stream to the DAS and DAS uh, is part uh, summary uh, plan, know how to generate summary and these summary are stored in uh, external RDBs, not DAS inside and this billing engine should uh, retrieve this data from that uh, external RDBs so that these, this billing engine Active data from the RDBMS feedback to the billing engine. So now we talk about two ways we can uh, uh, configure and uh, analyze. So one way is uh, you, uh, when we uh, retrieve data both from a DAS REST API or from external RDBMS. So when we compare these two uh, methods uh, in REST case, uh, which is uh, which is easy to uh, set up. So uh, quick uh, configuration API manager and that and uh, we don't need any additional data source and it's easy and uh, but this uh, uh, REST method is suitable if you have uh, less number of users API and app application and it reduces the deployment and configuration complexities uh, but uh, in this case uh, we uh, fetch data from uh, that REST API using uh, uh, to sync queries, uh, which is uh, has limited uh, capabilities like uh, we can't uh, uh, join two tables and like that we have uh, limitations, but we can do aggregation, uh, grouping and uh, those things, but we cannot go for complex uh, query and uh, which has a uh, lower performance than RDBMS when compared when you have large uh, data records and we don't have uh, we don't have to uh, write uh, two uh, database dependent queries for retrieving data. When I, in compare with RDBMS, uh, which is suitable for if you have, even if you have a uh, large number of API users application, right, it has high, uh, high performance for large data and also which support uh, several RDBMS servers, MySQL, Oracle and whatever uh, they are support. And which is possible for more complex queries like uh, database to any more uh, complex uh, aggregate function grouping and etc. Uh, but in this case, we need additional RDBMS and which uh, will which need extra setup time configuration and also we have to write uh, uh, database dependent query for when uh, feeding back to the uh, billing engine and. Now uh, we have uh, generated uh, summary data. Now we need uh, we need to get the summary data and feed feed to the uh, billing engine. For that we have a billing agent, and you can uh, get the steps from uh, either the DAS API or DBMS. And since we have all the uh, event uh, related uh, data in uh, DAS, uh, we can come up with our own. Uh, mechanism to uh, generate uh, summary data. Uh, in API manager we also provide some uh, summary data which is uh, used for our statistic and uh, if someone wants some custom statistic uh, as an example in our case we generated uh, statistics for uh, daily basis but someone wants it in hourly basis we, they can come up with their own uh, tables uh, summarization plan using this path, they can come up with their own summary data. So after you generate uh, your custom summary data, you can uh, feed them uh, using uh, agents back to the billing engine. And using this path, you can uh, as a possibility to uh, process your uh, 
event stream to summary data easily. And next thing is uh, when you uh, your your app developer use your API, subscribe and uh, ignore. Uh, in some cases, they may not pay you a bill uh, as you expect. In that case, what uh, what uh, API publisher can do is they can find out what are the uh, app developers and application who didn't, uh, pay that bills, and they can have option to uh, block block that. Uh, subscription so that you can follow uh, first URL to uh, block that subscription or you can uh, go into publisher subscription UA to uh, block that subscription uh, and after that when application developer repay that uh, amount you can then again unblock that subscription so next thing is uh, since in our uh, when billing what we do is we sometimes we allow uh, to invoke uh, API even after uh, access limit is free. So in that case, what can happen is uh, sometimes uh, backend service may get uh, may get flat because there are uh, un there can be unlimited requests and you don't have the control of it. So what the option we have. For, uh, this is we can uh, define hard level throttle limit for API. So when uh, API, pub, API publisher creating API, he can mention uh, hard level throttle limit for the F, uh, at, at API. So in that case, uh, we we mention a transfer uh, maximum transaction per limit, and even you uh, allow after the total limit is reached. Uh, if this uh, limit, limit is reached, uh, those uh, requests are get blocked. So, uh, get uh, is not get part with uh, many requests. So, to add to this uh, concept, we have uh, prepared uh, demonstrations. So, we will go through that demonstration. So. So what uh, as uh, what we're going to do in here, we are going to create API and to the application, and we are uh, going to subscribe to that API and uh, invoke, and then uh, generate the invoice. So what we first going to do is we are going to uh, create two uh, tiers and two uh, usage span in the in engine to reflect these two tiers. So what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to log into the admin dashboard using my admin admin account. Then I'm going to uh, throttle in TS. Then you can find uh, default available TS, and I'm going to uh, define new tier. And I call it uh, diamond, which allow 50 requests per minute, and uh, we are going to define a subscription fee 60 dollars per month and we charge uh, 0.2 dollars for extra request. So here uh, name will be uh, diamond and request count will be 50 and unit time will be uh, 1 minute and 60 seconds. So I am going to uh, use you cover more description. And uh, in this case, uh, this tire will uh, not uh, block uh, request even after this reach the hello uh, limit. So in in that case, we are not going to tick this uh, check box, and but uh, we are going to define this uh, plan as a premium plan. So we call it commercial and <coughs> save it. So you can see the newly added tier here and I'm going to add another new tier and which is called platinum and it will it allow uh, 100 requests per minute and which is uh, 0 0.02 uh, dollars per request for additional request and name is platinum 
and it keeps count hundred per second minute. More description. And in this case, we are going to block the uh, request after you reach the uh, maximum allowed limit. So I am going to tick this option and it is also commercial tier and going to save. And now, now we have created two uh, tiers here. So what I am going to do next is I am going to billing engine with my admin account and create two new billing plan to reflect these two tiers. So I am going to my billing engine and sign in as admin account. So here we have two options to uh, define uh, two types of uh, usage plan. One is standard plan. I am going to define the one is standard plan. Uh, standard plan means uh, in this case which allow to uh, use the API even after it is exceeds the uh, allowed uh, request count and which is name is also uh, I'm going to use diamond. And and this enter is allowed quarter is 50 and monthly uh, fee will be uh, 60 dollars per month and additional uh, fee for success will be uh, 0.2 dollars and I am save the plan and also I am going to define new uh, plan for our uh, other tier and uh, which name will be uh, platinum and platinum and platinum and which We define uh, 0 0.02 per for each uh, request, and we're going to save the plan. So now we have created the uh, plan, and I'm going to look out from the plan, and then I'm uh, going to publisher for creating a, a API. So I'm logging to the publisher using my publisher account uh, one. and I am going to create new API and I call it uh, hello API and context will be hello and I set person as 100 and I am going to provide icon as well and I am going to add a new resource response with get method. Okay, I am going to implement the stage. Here I am uh, define endpoint here and it will be H280 response and then manage the state. Uh, now I'm going to uh, define my already defined uh, two tiers uh, as available tiers for this API, platinum and diamond, and then I save and publish the API. So this is the API I just created. For so continue with the demonstration, I invite no one. Right, so thanks Rukshan. So what we just did was we defined our usage plans on the API manager as well as on the uh, on our billing system and we published an API uh, using uh, those two billing plans. 
So there were two, those are two different types of plans. One was a, a monthly kind of uh, payment and the other was a per request based uh, payment mechanism. So now we are going to the API consumption part. So for that I am going to visit the API store here and I will log in with my like uh, pre-created account. So once I'm logged into the like the, the, the store, I can now see the API that uh, was created by Rukshan. So uh, next, what I will be doing is I will be going and creating two applications. One called the Diamond application, which I will be using for subscribing over the Diamond here, and the next application called the Platinum application, which I will be using to subscribe over the uh, the Platinum tier. So I will. Uh, go ahead and create these two applications and then I click on this uh, hello API and uh, and select the diamond application and the diamond tier and uh, press on the subscribe button. So in this case uh, since my user account uh, Rukshan is not available on my billing system uh, I will be uh, given a confirmation and said that I'm going to be redirected to my billing system. So here I will be, uh, I have to sign up and create my uh, user account. So I will provide the necessary details that are required uh, to create my user account, my credit card information uh, and the other details. So I will provide those information and click on the sign up button. So once that is done, I am now redirected back to my API store to continue with my uh, work. So if I go back to the my subscriptions page and click on the diamond application, you will see that my subscription has now been created and it's in the uh, active state. So I can go ahead and actually use this API now over the diamond tier. So I will generate keys for my application and uh, copy this access token and I have a pre-created uh, kind of JMeter script which I will use to access uh, this API. So I will uh, copy this token over and save and I will access this uh, API. So I, as you can see this TA actually only allows me 50 requests per minute. Uh, but in this case I sent uh, 70 requests and all of them were successful. So the, the reason for this is uh, when defining the TA I said uh, not to uh, block any requests even if they reach the particular quota and that's why it, this has allowed me to do 70 uh, requests. So uh, similarly now I will uh, go to the Hello API again and subscribe it uh, to it through my Platinum application. So I will select the TIA as platinum and press on subscribe and now uh, you will notice that I am no longer being redirected to my billing system because my user account is already now available in my billing system so in here I don't have to uh, do the same thing over and over again so I can directly subscribe and uh, generate keys uh, for my app and use this access token uh, to invoke the particular API. So I will copy that access token over into another JMeter script that I have uh, created and uh, I will access this uh, uh, API. So in this case this particular platinum tier allowed me to do 100 requests per minute but it was kind of like a normal tier where the, the requests that are over consuming will be blocked. So that's why in this case I sent 110 requests but uh, about almost 10% of it was uh, blocked off because the particular tier uh, decided to drop them off. So uh, that's basically the, the, the how the subscription works, um, uh, the subscription and the, how the subscription workflow works. So the, the, the final step here is on the invoicing part. So to show you how invoicing works, uh, I will log into my uh, billing system again as the admin user. Uh, and uh, another thing I have to mention is that when I was accessing those APIs, I accessed them through the 
ABI gateway and for each one of those requests uh, there was an event sent to an analytics engine to do the analysis. Uh, so all the successful requests, uh, the responses as well as the throttled out events, everything was pushed into an analytics engine. So now I can uh, using this uh, billing system that we have created, so this is a very sample um, uh, mock-up billing system that we came up with for the purpose of this webinar. So in reality you will be integrating it with an actual uh, billing system that you will use in your organization. So I will uh, select uh, select the, the diamond here uh, which I want to use, uh, which I want to bill for and set the billing cycle as uh, say February and generate an invoice. So now you see I get, I get an invoice uh, for, for, for the particular tier. So in this case if you look at the details, so this shows me that there have been like 70 requests and 20 of them have been throttled out. Uh, throttled out in sense they have been captured as throttled out events but not really blocked. And fee per success request is zero because this particular billing plan it builds me on a monthly basis, a standard fee for a month. And fee per throttled out request in this case is 0.2 dollars. So my total amounts to 60 dollars per month plus uh, the 4 dollars that come uh, are from the throttled out request. So that's how the re uh, total of 64 came in. So the this same theory can be applied like it's for the platinum tier as well. So if I decide to generate an invoice for the platinum tier, you will see that I can get an invoice for the platinum tier for the February period. And in this case, the request count is 100, and 10 of uh, 10 requests have been uh, throttled out. And for this particular billing plan, I don't have a monthly fee. Uh, what I have instead is a uh, uh, per request. So. 0 0.02 dollars into 100 requests is, uh, amounts to a total of uh, 2 dollars. So that's how the uh, invoicing works. So this basically concludes our uh, presentation and the demonstration. So we hope that it had given you uh, a good enough idea on the integration points of the product uh, when you are doing API monetization and uh, all the necessities that you have to fulfill in order to get the full integration done. So if you have any questions, let me check. We have received any questions and uh, we'll be happy to answer them. If you have any questions, uh, please do send in uh, through the uh, go to webinar chat, and we'll be happy to answer. Okay, so uh, one good uh, question would be like, uh, is it just the WSO2 data analytics server that you can use, or are there any other components? So yes, uh, if it's like on a, a monthly kind of uh, basis where you do batch uh, analysis or processing, uh, the data analytics server would be the uh, proper solution to go with because it uh, deals with a lot of data and is able to aggregate and do the summarize. But if you want to do uh, like uh, billing or similar kind of thing for smaller data uh, the data amounts on a real time uh, perhaps basis, 
maybe for prepaid uh, subscriptions or things like that then a better solution or uh, the better match would be using the uh, WSO2 complex event processor because it is able to do um, analysis uh, then and there itself. So maybe for prepaid based uh, like kind of plans you can use uh, the complex event processor. So uh, how this affects uh, uh, distributed or uh, scale gateway environment? So uh, it's uh, not uh, actually a concern because uh, you might have uh, different gateways, uh, several gateways, uh, but all of them uh, would publish events to a single location, uh, be it a DAS, a data analytics server cluster, or a complex event processing cluster. Uh, it will be all be published to a single location and all the analytics will be done from a single place so it's, uh, it actually has doesn't have an effect on uh, the distributed manner of the architecture Okay, so we will be wrapping up the session for today then. Uh, thank you for everyone who joined in and hope you enjoyed the webinar. The webinar content will be uh, hosted on site um, probably in a few days time. Uh, you could uh, go through the content again and the slides will also be available. And if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to reach out uh, to our folks. Uh, you will find the necessary contact details on the site or you can even contact uh, me directly. Uh, my email address is uh, nuand, uh, d for dash, at wso2.com. Uh, so thanks again for joining and uh, we do hope you will join in for the rest of the webinar series uh, which will be happening. Thank you very much and have a nice day.